The member for Moriarty. Thank you, sir. I enjoy the speeches of the member for Lee. They are uh, a delightful pantomime uh, that uh, never, never ceases to entertain. Um, vaudeville and pantomime, they are both separate forms of art. I'm sure the member for Lee is familiar with them both deeply. Um, I've got to say there were some, uh, uh, what you would call, if uh, I think the technical term uh, the member for Lee from his high school debating, I'm sure would remember, is a straw man argument. The idea that you characterise your opponent's views in a certain way and then describe them as bad people for maintaining a question mark over a proposition that indeed the member for Lee hadn't heard of if we were to be believed until about 13 days ago. Um, the idea that the member for Lee puts forward in a range of points in his pantomime or his vaudeville as he prefers to characterise himself uh, is indeed uh, problematic. I think that it's worth pausing for a moment and addressing some of the points he makes. Member for Lee asks the House to spare him the crocodile tears from people concerned about process. Uh, he said that, uh, uh, yes, he said those words, spare us the crocodile tears regarding process. I you know, remind the member for Lee and the House. The opposition is, has not even sought today to block the suspension of standing orders to allow this debate to happen. In the previous term of Parliament, on those occasions, which I would characterise as actually the exception, I would characterise them as rare, where there was a bill that was necessary to be moved quickly, there was firstly, uh, invariably, an excuse, a reason, a cause for why there had been some urgency to the matter. Secondly, uh, the immediate response of the Labor Party uh, when such a proposition was put forward was, with the exception of certain measures in relation to COVID-19, uh, it was crocodile tears. It was sc screams of outrage from the member for Lee and the member for West Torrens, uh, and indeed many others, uh, that it was the worst contravention uh, of human rights uh, since the Great Reform Act uh, of the 19th century had been passed. I um, remember the uh, member for West Torrens saying, and uh, I'm, I've just grabbed the quote, um, uh, from a previous one, uh, not even in relation specifically to the suspension of standing orders, but a contravention of the practice of a bill laying on the table for 10 days to enable consultation. Uh, the member for West Torrens in the last term of Parliament said the reason we have this practice and procedure in this Parliament is that we're able to read that, that legislation, understand it, go away and consult on the legislation, talk to stakeholders about that legislation, get advice on potential amendments we may or may not wish to move, be briefed by the government on the intent of the legislation. That is the way the normal practice of reform occurs in this Parliament, and it has for decades. I'm not weeping for crocodile tears. I'm just concerned about hypocrisy, sir. Uh, and presented by those opposite, uh, the uh, gnashing of teeth, uh, the wailing, the moaning, and indeed the crocodile tears that we heard for four years when there was an occasional uh, a, uh, a, you know, uh, removal from the standard practices of the place. Uh, we've had the response this year uh, of a regularity uh, of unstandard practice. Um, to the point where, if you look on the notice paper, the government business program that is currently on the interwebs right now, on the uh, Parliament's website, uh, listed for today, uh, is the Criminal Law Consolidation Human Remains Amendment Bill Continuation Completion of the Debate. And I'm not arguing. I, we didn't seek to oppose the suspension of standing orders. But when the notice of government business was presented to us at 4.40pm on Friday last, uh, and it contained uh, an amendment to the standing orders, which we dealt with yesterday, uh, the Russian Assets Bill, the Human Remains Bill and the National Energy Laws Bill, and nothing else. We certainly turned up this week prepared to debate those. Uh, and when the government gave us a new agenda for this week at 12.04 on Monday, uh, which added uh, extra bills, it added the Shopping Centre Parking Areas Bill, um, Noting, of course, the government's uh, uh, identification, and we're grateful for the identification of a time for the maiden speech, which was also uh, provided last week. They also added the uh, national energy laws and the electric vehicle levy bill. And that was fine. We remain prepared to debate those bills. They've been on the notice paper for some time. The opposition uh, has positions. We have speakers ready to go. 
Uh, until today, and indeed yesterday, there was verbal updates that the, uh, this debate would happen, and we appreciate that verbal updates. It's uh, helpful to know that. It informs us when considering oppo opposing suspension of standing orders. But today at 11.44, the next uh, iteration of the weekly program comes out, uh, adding in the motion uh, from the uh, Minister for Sport, which was initially introduced as a private member's motion, but then government business. Uh, it includes tomorrow the defaulting council bill, which I think the member uh, introduced a couple of hours ago, uh, and indeed uh, this bill that we are debating now. Um, the point I make is that the government, over the course of the last five months and a couple of weeks, has not just done this in exceptional circumstances, they're making it a regularity of practice. And I'm not weeping crocodile tears. We didn't oppose the, uh, the amendment. Uh, we're not going to seek to do as the member for West Torrens did and the member for Lee did and the member for Ghana did on so many bills during the last term of parliament to uh, give 15-minute speeches in every opportunity on ev three times a clause uh, throughout the entirety of a, of a bill. Um, the filibuster is not what's going on here. We're making some observations on a bill uh, that we got yesterday, and I'm not sure that members of the Labor Party room got any earlier, uh, or certainly not before caucus yesterday morning. Uh, the media says it was decided at the show on Monday night. The member for Lee said in his speech that the timing, the urgency of this debate, was partly to give people in the southeast as much possible opportunity to consider the proposition prior to voting on it. And he said that uh, there were 60 some days, nearly 10 weeks, for them to do so, from it being announced earlier this week until they're asked to vote. Of course, it would have given them more time to consider the proposition, and it would have given council more time to give advice on the proposition had the government identified this bill, which is such an important priority that it takes precedence over every other bill of the House. All of the other ones that they've listed takes precedence over private parking, which the Premier talked about in question time today, takes precedence over everything else. So important that the government didn't think it was worth giving them more than 66 days notice by letting them know earlier in the year. I have some questions that we'll get to in the committee stage, sir. I have... I've been very patient. Now, we have a, we have a question before us. The, 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 the content of your debate is more of a suspension, why we should spend or not, which I appreciate. So I would ask, I'm, so happy, I'm, happy, to give, I'm happy to give you some latitude, but I would ask you to get actually to the substance of the bill itself. That's what we're doing. We're debating the second reading. I, I appreciate your counsel, sir. Yeah. I identify that I've been cautious to say that far from talking about the suspension, we didn't oppose the suspension. I'm talking about the merits of this bill and the decisions that will inform people putting a view on this bill today. It may well be the government chooses to adjourn the bill, having considered the fact that some consultation with communities and councils about amendments to the bill may or may not be of merit. I suspect the government won't because uh, that's not the way the Labor caucus operates. I also identify, sir, that the entirety of my speech uh, has largely been reflective of the member for Lee's speech. Uh, and uh, I did not notice uh, 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 any attempt from the opposition to stymie his opportunity to do so. We were enjoying his, as he describes it, vaudeville. So the member for Lee said that this bill's important now to give people as much time as possible to inform a vote. And my view is uh, that considering it for another 10 days would also do so. Uh, but the Legislative Council will form their own view on that, and I'm sure that each of them will be reading the Hansard intently. The, um, the uh, member for Lee uh, said that it was almost the custom and practice under the previous government to not even conform, inform the opposition, confirm to the opposition whether a particular bill was to be introduced ahead of a giving sitting week, providing briefings, and so forth. Um, again, I, uh, I don't think that was correct. Uh, I think it's far more apt a description of this government's approach, not in every aspect. Now, as I was saying, we have some questions that there will be the opportunity to ask in the committee stage should the government proceed through the second reading this afternoon. Um, I'll give the member for Frome, sorry, the member for Stewart, uh, a heads up on where some of these questions are. Um, this bill purports to be about a plebiscite. It's even in the title. Uh, and yet... 
We're talking about providing ballot papers to go out with the local government election, traditionally a plebiscite. Uh, the identification and the purpose is to get everyone voting. Uh, is it a plebiscite uh, when we voluntary voting and a limited number of people return? Is the government looking for an absolute majority of constituents, residents in the subject areas, or is the government uh, looking for an, a majority only of those who choose to vote? Uh, is an absent vote or somebody who chooses not to vote in their local government elections at this time uh, a no vote uh, or is it just removed from the process whatsoever? If somebody doesn't feel moved to vote in the council elections, and this is not an unusual experience in South Australian council elections, uh, I'm sure you recall, some councils have very good turnouts. Uh, I've no doubt yours did too when they were drawn to vote for you, sir, and I'm sure that they fell away dramatically when you were no longer on the ballot paper. It is possible that not every, not every council has that level of turnout and it will have a different levels of turnout. Can I ask the Minister to reflect on the question of whether the Boundaries Adjustment Commission will, after this plebiscite that is being interposed in the process, then undertake the other community consultation that the Act requires them to do when considering council alignments, adjustments and amalgamations? So we have uh, proposed boundary ad adjustments uh, in my electorate of Morialta, sir. Uh, the Campbelltown Council and the Adelaide Hills Council have been discussing this for several years. I have a number of residents uh, in the hills part of Ross Trevor, uh, in the uh, older parts of Woodford that have been there for some time, and the new development at Woodford, for whom this is a very live issue, who have very strong feelings about this. Uh, and they look forward to that community consultation should an investigation take place, which may happen uh, early next year. Now, that community consultation that is to happen according to the current legislation and which is happening in relation to any other boundary adjustments that are underway, that community consultation is, in my view, the most important part of the process because it is the first time after years of discussion where there is a formal process for those members of the community uh, to have their voices heard. And I hope that the Boundaries Commission will put a very heavy stake on that community consultation. And I don't consider it my job as the MP to tell, the, uh, to tell members of the community which way they should inform the Commission uh, in their views. They are well in their rights. They are certainly more than capable uh, of presenting that case to the Commission themselves. I know they will and I'll pass on uh, the feedback from those that have chosen to give it to me as well to the Commission uh, in the form that it comes in. So that consultation is what happens in any council areas. When the member for Lee says that in voting against this bill or in not supporting this bill, anyone is therefore not wanting people to have their say, I make the point that by my reading of this bill, were it to pass and were a plebiscite to be supported by a local community, that would only then trigger the investigation where there would be another round of community consultation which would also inform the process as to whether a boundary amalgamation is to merge. Now, to my knowledge, the legislation as it operates hasn't gone through the process of the community consultation in one of these before. To my memory, the legislation was reformed in 2017 uh, or 2016 possibly. Uh, and the ones in Gawler and Campbelltown are possibly going to be the first cases where it gets to the community consultation phase. To my mind, it's tremendously important that that community consultation is done extremely well and seriously and takes into account the views of residents and electors. This process that abbreviates all of the leading points to whether or not an investigation happens that is proposed for this council area alone by the Minister for Local Government and the Government uh, does pose some serious questions to then whether that subsequent community consultation process, firstly, whether the government proposes to have it leapfrog in front of other community consultations that may need to be run, and secondly, uh, whether or not that community consultation will be taken seriously. Because it will be a difficult proposition for the Boundaries Commission to undertake an investigation, to do all of the research work into the details about how local government reform in this case is to play out, having had a plebiscite that says yes, should it do so, then that commission will have to do the investigation, funded by the government presumably, and part of that has to be community consultation. That second community consultation will need to be informed by all of the information that has come in through the actual investigation itself. I mean, the challenges after Brexit come to mind. 
If you have a plebiscite that is non-binding, but raises expectations to the level where it is almost impossible for the subsequent investigatory work to come up with an accepted different proposition, then that's a very serious problem. Now, I don't know if this is something that formed part of the discussion at Cabinet or in caucus before the Labor Party proposed to bring this on urgently. It's the sort of thing that had the bill been introduced and given 10 days on the table, Labor members might have reflected on. But instead, the government proposed to deal with this all today. I encourage them to reflect on that consideration, give some serious questioning to laying out the process, because it strikes me that the uh, simple bill, as the member for Lee identified, might possibly have some unintended consequences. And as Labor members reflect on that, it really bears the House's consideration. What effect does this bill have on the local government elections in Grant and Mount Gambier? It may be none, but I'd be stunned if there weren't some people with a point of view that might like to furnish our colleagues in the Legislative Council with that point of view in the coming days. As I understand it, there's to be separate plebiscites in Grant and Mount Gambier. What is the effect if one council votes no, one council area, the residents vote yes. Uh, voluntary voting means that it's not a majority of people in any case, but a majority of those who vote across the two combined councils were to be more in favour than against. What's the government going to do with that piece of information? What's the Boundaries Commission going to do with that piece of information? I feel like the Minister for Local Government has been sold a bit of a pup by the government here. We don't know the circumstances of how this bill came to pass. It didn't come up from the suggestions of even those in the local community of Mount Gambia, uh, who, we, sorry, it's hard to imagine that it came up, from even those in the community in Mount Gambia who've been talking about potential amalgamations. Uh, because according to uh, information in the public today, it blindsided the, uh, the uh, uh, heads of local government in the area. Um, it is my view, sir, that the Premier has sought to rush this legislation through the Parliament without proper consultation. It is my view, sir, that the Premier and the Government haven't explained where this idea came from uh, and why there was no consultation and why Members of Parliament have now been denied this opportunity uh, to seek uh, co information to consult with residents and stakeholders. I trust, I expect, that Members of the Legislative Council will be given that opportunity and I'm pleased about that. Uh, the, the Premier hasn't explained why he didn't tell the mayors of the councils in the southeast why he wants them to merge uh, ahead of going through with them. this. Uh, it is a reckless blindside uh, on those councils uh, and on the parliament. Now, as I say, uh, my time's approaching an end, and I don't propose uh, to seek to do as members opposite, uh, not the minister, uh, but some other members opposite did during the last term by going on at great length during the committee stage. I think we've got some questions. I've even given some foreshadowing of that to the minister. He can reflect on some of them in the second reading reply, which will abbreviate some time. Uh, we'll go through the committee stage. We're not going to seek to draw it out any longer than is necessary uh, for the parliament's duty. The opposition, in seeking to not, as the member for Lee said, oppose the bill, but instead reserve our right on the bill for some of that consideration to take place, it may well be that there are answers to these questions that I've posed. Uh, and indeed, in the Legislative Council, we will certainly uh, be putting forward with our votes uh, a strong position that is reflective of the wants, the needs, the desires of people in the southeast and around the state. Uh, I think that the straw man argument constructed by the member for Lee uh, that not forming a position in the House uh, is a bit asinine, to be true, sir, uh, given that the bill arrived to us a day ago. Um, I don't think the minister would characterise it in the way that the member for Lee did because the minister uh, does not resort to vaudeville or pantomime or whatever else the member for Lee would like to characterise his speeches in. Um, but I do think that on this by going through this process in the way that it has, the Minister is mistaken. Nevertheless, uh, the bill, I'm sure, will go through the House. We are aware of the numbers in the House. Uh, and I look forward to some answers to questions. I look forward to further consultation with communities uh, and stakeholders ahead of the Legislative Council's consideration of the same.